Solana has been one of the hottest crypto projects in the space over the past few years. With an insane price performance in 2021, touted as a fast, scalable blockchain of the future, it was a major star in the previous bull market. But since then, it's definitely seen a string of misfortune, including multiple hacks, several network outages, and recently we've seen that a lot of the stats that were backing up the ecosystem were completely bogus, and how a large amount of the network activity was 100% faked by a few different developers. And in this video, I want to break down exactly how these numbers were faked, because this likely had a pretty big impact on the price of the Solana cryptocurrency in 2021. So trust me, this is a crazy story, you don't want to miss this. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to have become a blockchain master step-by-step -step from start to finish, then head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's get into this crazy story about how a large amount of the activity on the Solana ecosystem was completely faked and how that likely had a huge impact on Solana's price during 2021. So you can see that this uh, massive trend in Solana's price, which you know peaked up around November of 2021 with the rest of the crypto market, uh, which went absolutely parabolic. And so let's set the stage for how this happened. So it starts off with you know the real uh, reason that lots were using blockchains at all during 2021 was this trend of decentralized finance or DeFi, particularly with yield farming. Okay, and so you, this trend right here is pretty clearly mirrored. Uh, by another metric on the Solana ecosystem throughout 2021, which is TVL, which stands for Total Value Locked. Basically, this is all of the cryptocurrency that's, you know, uh, stored on top of a certain DeFi protocol. In this case, it's this entire Solana ecosystem. And this trend is highly correlated to the price of Solana during the same period, okay? And so why is this number really important? Well, TVL is a metric that people use a lot during the 2021 bull market to look at actual adoption of projects. And this is one of the numbers that was thrown around there to throw hype on top of projects that they thought had a lot of future potential because, you know, in a lot of people's eyes, TVL is an indication of real adoption. And that adoption was one of the reasons that we had all this froth and during the bull market, all the speculative future use cases and the momentum potentially indicated by that trend. And so this TVL number right here that had high correlation to the rise in Solana price, this is one of the most misleading metrics that was completely manipulated. And it gave the illusion that there was an actual prominent DeFi ecosystem exploding here when there wasn't. And if you dig further into this, it actually turns out that really just two different developers were responsible for faking this entire DeFi ecosystem. So let's kind of break that down and see how it happened. All right, so it all starts off with this project and Solana called Sabre. So if you participated in Solana at all, you know, during 2021, maybe even now, uh, you likely have seen the Sabre stablecoin exchange, okay? So this is a DeFi app where you can, you know, swap different, uh, you know, stable coins. And the whole idea is it has automated market maker technology where it has liquidity pools in the back end. You can supply cryptocurrency and you can participate in yield farming, okay? Yield farming is one of the huge trends in 2021 uh, to try to get competitive yield, especially attractive on coins like stable coins who don't have the same volatility, uh, the other cryptocurrencies do, okay? So the thing about Sabre um, is that it's like any other blockchain-based application. You can build on top of it. It's an open permissionless system, okay? And so for that reason, we saw all these other, uh, you know, apps, you know, building on top of it, like Sunny, for example, the, the DEX aggregator, and then lots of other projects following suit, okay? And so anybody watching the ecosystem would say like, hey, look, we've got this project out here. It's legit. Uh, it's getting really uh, meaningful adoption in terms of a TVL, the total value lock. People, pe basically, people depositing cryptocurrency, trying to get that passive income reward. And then you've got all these other applications building on top of it, you know, just organic growth like Sunny, for example. And you see it's TVL going up too. It's like, okay, this is great. But that's not actually what was happening. So behind the scenes, the two developers who created Sabre in the first place were making up new identities that were building these other projects on top of their own protocol and actually, you know, double, triple, quadruple counting the TVL to make the ecosystem actually look bigger than it was. So basically, you know, creating new projects that looked like organic growth that wasn't actually organic growth and then propping up the metrics to look like something that wasn't actually happening. So let's get a deeper look at what actually happened here. So you can see that in the height of the bull market, uh, essentially was when Sunny was launched. This is the deck Dex aggregator that I was talking about here. Okay, and you know, whenever these new projects launch, it's always a question of like, who's behind this? Who's responsible? Are we gonna get rug pulled for using this project? And a major theme in crypto is that you have all these new projects that are getting started by anonymous developers or anons, okay? And so basically, uh, you know, we, we people were pushing in to see who actually started Sunny. And there was a anonymous developer or pseudonymous, I should say, 
uh, named Surya Kosla. At least I hope I'm saying that right. Doesn't really matter because it's not this person's real name. And there was no indication of who this was. But later on down the line, we actually found who this was. It was Ian Makalinao and his brother Dylan. And now both of these brothers created a bunch of different fake developer profiles out there. And now both of these brothers created a bunch of different fake developer profiles and built a bunch of different applications under these fake names to look like the ecosystem was actually getting meaningful adoption, but it wasn't. So from a later blog post, we can see a quote here. So I devised a scheme to maximize Solana's TVL. I would build protocols that stacked on top of each other such that a dollar could be counted several times. And so commenting further on this scheme, uh, he says that I believe it contributed to the dramatic rise of Sol or Solana's native cryptocurrency. And so how did that work? So basically you started off with this protocol like Saber, okay, which is an open protocol, which has a TVL on top of it where you can add stable coins, but the TVL can be misleading because you can double count, triple, quadruple, you know, quintuple count all these different cryptocurrencies, especially when you start stacking protocols on top of each other. And then you get two developers who know how this works and essentially able to manipulate this and build a bunch of protocols that look like organic growth. But at the end of the day, it's really just, you know, hot air, smoke and mirrors and doesn't actually reflect the meaningful adoption that lots of other people are banking on when you see the, you know, dramatic rise of a lot of cryptocurrencies like we did over this time period. All right. So this is a pretty crazy story. So what are some lessons we can actually take away and learn from this? So the number one is basically looking at metrics like total value locked or TVL and trying to have some literacy in how you read into these things, knowing that, uh, you know, these numbers can be manipulated or potentially double, triple counted, whatever. So I think a lot of people can really know this, but basically moving away from TVL as a gold standard for adoption is an important thing to do in the future. So, you know, number two is definitely don't fall for this type of thing. Uh, you know, again, but the old saying goes, just to fool me once. Uh, shame on you, fool me twice, and shame on me. And, you know, we're seeing brand new ecosystems pop up all the time in the crypto space, like uh, some new layer one blockchains hitting the scene, like SWE, for example, and also Aptos. We already have reports of both of these brothers shifting their focus from the Solana ecosystem over to the Aptos ecosystem. So, you know, definitely keep this on your radar for the future. And, you know, while this is a pretty crazy thing for Solana that, you know, doesn't look good in the short term, I think it's like a massive deal breaker for the Solana ecosystem over the long term. So, I don't think so. Okay. So, you know, like I was saying before, Solana has had a fair share of headwinds this year in particular. Okay. Like news like this coming out, but also things like the DeFi hacks that have happened, like with the wormhole bridge, also all the different network outages that it's had. So there's a lot of things that have caused people to sort of doubt the potential for Solana to be a viable solution over the long term. But I also want to point out that like some of these things, like the phony stats uh, are, are not unique to the Solana ecosystem. Okay. So, you know, we saw lots of things in the past, even with the Ethereum ecosystem, uh, especially in the early days of DeFi, where TVL is a misleading metric, but also even earlier than that, you know, with ICOs. So a lot of the ICO projects out there were, you know, people rinse and repeating the same ICOs over and over again, just under different names. A lot of those had a significant amount of fraud behind them as well. So basically, like people coming in and pulling schemes on in crypto it's not a new thing. And it's not always a reflection of the underlying technology itself. And so the reason I bring that up is there could still be a future beyond this that doesn't rely upon hype that's just completely fabricated. And the last thing to really talk about this in terms of lessons learned or how can we do better in the future is the whole idea of anonymity, okay, or pseudonymity. Basically, we have all these anon developers coming into the ecosystem who want to build new projects and never reveal their true identities. So this can this is a this is a double-edged sword because on the one hand, it makes sense because think about all the problems with building in public. If you're a, you know, if you're a DeFi developer, you're building a protocol that holds billions of dollars of cryptocurrency, or maybe you uh, built a cryptocurrency. And there could be people out there who want to come after you for any given reason if they know you have the ability to help compromise a protocol for you new some admin keys or something like that. There's always operational security risk. Also, you know, if you're operating in type of any regulatory gray area, then you might want to stay anonymous for those reasons. There's lots of reasons why, legitimate reasons why someone would want to remain anonymous that don't have anything to do with fraud. Okay, so that's the one side of the story. The other side of the story is, well, that makes it a lot easier to commit fraud because you don't actually have to put your identity, your true identity out there on the line and have your reputation at risk or act potentially, you know, run the legal risk of people knowing who you are if you, you know, made a rug pull or you did something shady, okay? So that's the other side of things. So what, where, you know, or, you know, where you could do that, or you could potentially multiply your identity and then become like a hundred different people 
as just one person. So how do you fix that potential problem? Well, we could potentially have the best of both worlds, essentially, with the solution of decentralized identity or civil resistance. So what does that mean? Well, a civil attack essentially is where uh, somebody attacks a network or a service where they subvert the reputations uh, system by creating a large number of uh, fake identities. So you see this problem on Twitter. You know, people people are worried about Twitter being full of bots and all that type of stuff. If you ever comment about MetaMask on Twitter, you instantly get these replies uh, with like scam bots, okay? So that's an example of a civil attack. And, you know, what we're seeing here, a DeFi ecosystem faked by several different anonymous developers, that's also a civil attack in one sense, okay? So how do you create civil resistance? Well, you can create civil resistance where you can prove that each individual person is actually human without revealing what their specific identity is. And that's one potential promise of digital identity with blockchain technology down the road, where you could potentially have anonymous developers who are creating something, but you could prove that they are human and prove that they're not the same identity as somebody else, okay? So that's one way to potentially mitigate this problem. All right, so that's an overview of the crazy story about how two different developers completely faked a large portion of Solana's DeFi ecosystem in 2021. Exactly how it happened and some lessons we can learn from this going forward. So I hope you like this video. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They like you to me courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you'll take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you how to master blockchain step by step start to finish over at dappydiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You do have to be an expert to get started today. I thought people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.